just shows the four basic things we consider a scattering reflector, and we'll talk about that in a minute, where something has a surface that's kind of granular and it sends the sound off in all directions. This just illustrates attenuation where nothing is in the way, but just going through tissue, the beam gradually gets less and less intense. This refraction, where we come to one of those boundaries between two different tissues, and the energy gets bent. Well, if you think about that, that's going to distort the image, and that's why our images often don't look quite as pretty as CT images, which don't have this problem. And then finally, just reflection, um, which is shown here a little bit incorrectly. It shows a beam coming in and reflecting off of a flat surface. Actually, it would come in at an angle, go off at the same angle, and we'll talk about that. So reflection and refraction, there are two types of reflectors, and it's important to know about these because these really are of practical importance as you scan. What are called specular reflectors, basically a flat mirror-like surface so that the energy coming in bounces off in a predictable direction. And then we have diffuse reflectors where the surface is knobby or gnarly and there's energy reflected in all directions, and that's obviously going to behave differently. Well, in early ultrasound terms, the specular reflector might be the hull of a ship, whereas a specular or rather diffuse reflector might be a school of fish, for example. And that's one reason even early sonar could tell something about their target, whether it's really something man-made or whether it's something artifactual like fish or seaweed or whatever. Another example, specular reflector, the glare off of glossy paper or off of a glossy screen, one of my pet peeves with uh, Macintosh. Uh, hard to read because what you're seeing is the reflection of the light, not the print on the page. The matte finished paper doesn't flood your eyes with that reflected light. Actually a good thing to have a diffuse reflector there because it's easier to read the print. So specular reflectors generally smooth surface and a large area compared to the wavelength we're using. And that's basically almost any organ in the body. Uh, liver, I'm sorry, it, that's not true at all. It's the large flat surfaces like the walls of the large blood vessels, uh, the fascia overlying the muscle, bones including fetal bones and fetal skull uh, tend to reflect predictably and, and pretty much everything gets reflected either back if it's coming in straight or off at an angle which we'll talk about. So for an ultrasound beam interacting with a specular reflector the angle of the beam incidence, the angle coming in is equal to the angle going out and uh, there's actually a website that lets you play with that a little bit, although it's pretty straightforward, where you can just, uh, and this one may take a minute to load, you can just see that as we vary the angle of the beam coming in, then uh, we get exactly the same angle reflected in the beam going out. Now you can see if we're at this angle, almost all the energy is going to come back to the transducer. We're going to get a very strong signal. If we're at this angle, almost none of the energy is going to come back. It's all going to go off away from the transducer. So that has some practical implications when you're trying to look at these things. Well, okay, so diagrammatically, this is what we just talked about where the incident ray, this is optical example, but ultrasound the same. Reflected ray, the angles are equal. But when we get to what happens at the boundary between these two tissue, tissues with different refractive indices or different acoustic impedances in our case, is some of the energy is go it goes off at a funny angle. And we can calculate that with what's called Snell's Law. And so you can actually predict for a given pair of adjacent tissues what that refraction angle is going to be. The diffuse reflector, again, this is most of the things we see in the body other than bone or uh, gallstones or whatever. So the parenchyma of most organs like liver, pancreas, and spleen, and the kidneys, and muscle and fat are specular or diffuse reflectors, and the energy sort of goes off in all directions and uh, does not have that same effect of getting a huge signal when you're directly at right angles and very little signal when you're uh, at a steeper angle. So going back to that example that we used at the beginning with our early pregnancy in the fetus, what kind of a reflector do we have here in the yolk sac? Is that specular or diffuse? Yeah, it's specular. It's a smooth surface, and you can see we get a lot of energy returning, and it uh, shows up as a very bright structure. And then the fetus itself, well, more of a diffuse reflector, as is the placenta back here. 
Attenuation we've already alluded to, but again, it's different depending on what material you happen to be going through. If you're going through water or urine or a cyst in the kidney, there's almost no attenuation, so almost all the energy gets through. If you're going through blood, there's a little bit more, through fat, a little bit more, through muscle, and most typical organs, a little bit more. And if you try to go through bone, there's a huge amount of attenuation. This is in decibels per centimeter at one megahertz. We usually scan at three and a half or four megahertz. So actually, you would end up with almost no energy getting past this structure back here. And again, we mentioned the fact that about 75% of attenuation is actually because we're converting this ultrasound energy into heat energy.